Uh, welcome everyone to the 2022 Annual General Meeting and Awards Presentation of the Chartered Governance Institute of Canada. So I'm Ingrid Stefancic. I will be chairing today's meeting. Um, before calling the 2022 Annual General Meeting to order, I'd like to take a few minutes to recognize our 2022 CGIC Award recipients. So on an annual basis, uh, the Board and Committee for Canada recognize those who are longstanding members of the Institute. In 2022, 13 individuals are being recognized for their 25 years of chartered membership. Additionally, one individual is being recognized, <clears throat> excuse me, for 50 years of chartered membership. Longstanding members are the backbone of our organization many of whom have helped us grow into the leading organization for chartered secretaries and qualified governance professionals. A heartfelt thank you for your support over the years. For 2018, the Outstanding Branch Member Award recognizes a member whose contributions within their branch are significant and noteworthy. This year's recipient is, and I hope we've managed to keep this a surprise, Daniel Shepherdson. Dan has made significant contributions and achieved countless milestones for the Ontario branch, including single-handedly creating an accounting system, migrating the branch's books and records, and synchronizing decades of corporate records, all while managing annual audits and other corporate alignment tasks. Dan is known for his stewardship, showing qualities of empathy, inclusion, and accommodation, among other members and peers, with a consistent membership tenure. Thank you, Dan, for performing so many multi-level achievements for the branch and national. Next. Thank you very much, Ingrid. Just, I'll just break in there and say thank you very much and uh, very much appreciated. And uh, thank you for, uh, for allowing me to be part of this for so many years. I, I, di I didn't hit the 25 because I seem to be way past that, but that's okay. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dan. And next, the Distinguished Professional Service Award was established in 1955 for the purpose of recognizing outstanding contributions to the governance profession. This year, we are pleased to announce that there are two equally deserving recipients of this award. The first recipient is Dr. Logan Atkinson. Logan is an exceptional motivational leader and mentor. He has made significant and notable contributions to the profession and the community, whether in Ottawa, Kitchener, Waterloo, or in his current home in Sackville, New Brunswick. He has served CGIC in many capacities over the years on the national board and various national committees, on the Ontario Branch Council, on the editorial board of the Corporate Governance Quarterly, as a chief examiner, as an instructor and as an author. He believes strongly in the principles of servant leadership and is a thoughtful and caring practitioner in that respect. Thank you, Logan, for your service to CGIC over the years. Logan with us? Yes, I am, Ingrid, thank you. I'm really quite surprised, uh, honestly, uh, to receive this award. I'm going to have to update my picture. I think that one's getting a little skinny for me now. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> I guess that's the way of the world, isn't it? But anyway, thank you, uh, Ingrid, for your kind words and to the CGIC for the honor. Very, very much appreciated. Thank you. Thank you and congratulations. The next recipient is Joseph Leo Gilles Levesseur. Previously served CGIC as chair of the Ontario branch and on the national board. During that time, he was a mentor and coach for candidates for exam preparation, guiding students on how to study for success. He also drafted the Canadian edition of commercial law and governance exams and then corrected them. One of his most valuable contributions has been his motivation to promote the chartered designation to students at the university level in Canada. Thank you, Gilles, for your work with students over the years to improve their success and the success of the Institute. I don't know if Gilles is with us. Will we? Evening. My God, sorry, I, 
sorry, I, I didn't even wear a shirt and a tie, okay? I didn't, I didn't even know. I'm sorry, I look bad, okay? Well, I'm sorry. You know, you don't expect these things. My God, thank you so much. I, I, I'm just sorry. I, I, I don't know what to say. I didn't, you know, you're just here for the AGM. So sorry, I, I, thank you so much. And I'm proud to be actually wearing my designation when I actually go up there. That's, I know that sounds, some of you will say, well, that's normal, but it's just, there's this, this proudness and it's great. And so that's why I want to say thank you for that. I appreciate that. Well done, guys. Well done. Thank you. Sorry, I wasn't prepared. I didn't know. Don't say you're okay. sorry. It was the surprise element. You, it you was a surprise. It. Yeah, okay. it's a surprise. So thank you, Jim. Well, you're recording it and I don't look good. You know what I mean? <laughs> so that concludes our 2022 awards presentations. Uh, and on behalf of the board and the Committee for Canada, I would like to congratulate all those that have been recognized today. Certificates will be sent to you by the national office in the coming days. And again, congratulations. While we quickly organize ourselves for the state of the, for the start. Can, I, can I, I just say on? something? Can I just say something? Really? Thank you, but I didn't see the list properly. It was just of the 25 years and the 50. I didn't, it didn't really show up properly. So I was just asking to show it. Let me see who was on it. Thank you. So while we quickly organize ourselves for the start of the annual general meeting, please enjoy this new CGIC promotional video. So thank you, Patricia. Yeah. Thank you. <clears throat> of course. <clears throat> Um, yes. So if uh, we have quorum, we do. We do. So we can mm -hmm. proceed with the business of the annual general meeting now? Yes, we can. Perfect. So um, we kindly ask that if you make a motion or ask a question, please state your full name for the record. I would like to welcome you all to the 2022 Annual General Meeting of the Chartered Governance Institute of Canada. I now call this meeting to order and ask Patricia Thacker, the Executive Director of CGIT, to act as a recording secretary for the meeting. The notice calling this meeting was sent to all members uh, on May 17, 2022, in accordance with the requirements of the bylaws of CGIC. I will ask for a motion to dispense with the reading of the notes, no excuse me, notice of the meeting. Is anyone opposed to this motion? Okay, any abstentions? So hearing no opposition or abstention, the motion is carried. So as a result of COVID-19 and out of an abundance of caution, this annual general meeting is being held by a Zoom video conference. I've been assured that there's a quorum present for the transaction of business. I now declare this meeting regular, regularly called and properly constituted for the transaction of the business of the annual general meeting. The 2021 annual general meeting of CGIC was held on June 2, 2021. The minutes from the meeting were pre-circulated with, with the notice. I asked for a motion to dispense with the reading of minutes of the last AGM. Is there anyone opposed to this motion? Any abstentions? 
Hearing none, the motion to dispense with the reading of the minutes from the last AGM is carried. Now I'm going to move on to the presentation of the report of the CGIC board to members. I would like to thank members of the Committee for Canada and the board members of CGIC for their tireless work throughout the year on behalf of the members of the Canada Division. The composition of the board is as follows. Myself serving as president of the division, Kim Chua and Robin Dunn serving as vice presidents, Jean Janot serving as treasurer and divisional representative to the International Council, Christina Swan serving as the division secretary, and Wisdom Mube, Richard Thomas, Shauna Mason, Daniel Shepherdson, and Suzanne Barrett serving as board members. On behalf of the Committee for Canada and the board members of CGIC, I would like to take a minute to recognize Richard Thomas, who is retiring from the CGIC National Board today. Richard is leaving the National Board after serving as the BC representative on the board and Committee for Canada for the past three years. During his time on the board, Richard played a critical role as part of the Governance and Admissions Committee in updating the governing documents for the division. We'd like to thank Richard for his contribution and we wish him well as he continues to serve on the BC Branch Council. Thank you very much, Richard. I don't know if he's present. Thank you. It was a pleasure working with you. The report of the activities of the board was circulated with the notice of this meeting. I will not read that report to you today, but instead I would like to highlight a few items. As you will hear from the treasurer momentarily, CGIC continues to experience very good financial health. Membership in the Institute has grown by more than 20% over the past two years to 1,169 members strong. This past year, a record number of students started their IQP studies, wrote an IQP exam, and or completed the director's education and accreditation program. The move of our educational programs to online delivery has proven to be very successful. The division continues to invest in its virtual continuing, continuing professional development program, which was introduced in 2020. These sessions are a convenient way for members to stay informed and gain CPD credits. Our webinars are currently being offered to both members and non-members free of charge. December 31, 2021 marked the conclusion of our 2019 to 2021 growth and sustainability plan. Activities accomplished under this plan were instrumental in helping the division right the ship. Over the past two years, Canada has become the rising star amongst the nine international divisions. Our 2022 to 2024 strategic plan, being top of mind 365, was approved by the board in February 2022. The plan represents a bold member-driven vision for CGIC and provides a clear roadmap to guide the work of the organization over the coming three years. CGIC will be holding a town hall in the fall of 2022, the date is still to be determined, where leadership will present the strategy to members, including a summary of progress made to date. Please keep an eye out for your invitation to attend. I'd now like to invite Jean Janot, the International Council Representative for the Canada Division, to give you an update on the activities of CGI International. Jean? Thank you, Madam President. And good afternoon and good evening to everybody. On behalf of CGI International, I'm happy to report that CGI International continues to experience very good financial help. As of December 31st, 2021, Global membership stood at 30,235. International remains concerned about division's ability to grow members. And as a result, the Professional Standards Committee has established new guidelines to update the entry uh, requirements for membership. The intent of this initiative is not to water down the qualifications, but simply to provide better access to the Institute to professionals that are best suited to join. Members will be kept updated as the programs are launched. International has adopted a new code of conduct for members. In the coming month, the Canadian Division will review its own code of conduct to see if changes are required. CGI 
is working to increase its focus on member benefits by producing more thought leadership papers, webinars, hiring a policy analyst, and re-engaging in its e-community. Plans are underway to launch the e-community for graduates in the fall of 2022 and a global membership passport in January 2023. More information will be shared with members when available. Wisdom and Newby, a fellow of the Institute CGIC member and past president of the board, has been appointed to the International Professional Standards Committee. Congratulations, Wisdom. The Exec Committee for the International Council will be changing effective July 1st, 2022. Jill Parat from the Southern, so the Southern African Division will be the incoming president. John Eaton from the UK and Saeed Abdul Amid from Malaysia will be the incoming vice president. Madam President, this is the report from International. Thank you, Jean. Please continue with the treasurer's update. Thank you again, Madam President. It is my pleasure to report on a financial position of the Chartered Government Institute of Canada for the fiscal year ended December 31st, 2021. Our auditors, Kelly Weber McNeely, have audited these financial statements and have given their audit opinion that these statements present fairly and in all material respect the statement of financial position as of December 31st, 2021. The statements of revenue and expenses and the statement of cash flow for the year then ended. The financial statements were prepared in accordance with generally accepted accounting principles for not-for-profit organization. The audit report was issued without qualifications. You will note that these statements provided as part of the annual general meeting material are unsigned. The intent is for the statements that will form part of our permanent records to be signed at the next face-to-face -face board meeting. In reviewing the statement, in reviewing the financial statements, you will see that cash balances has increased 66% year over year by $180,000, resulting in a year end cash balance of 452,698. At year end, 80% of cash was held in an interest bearing account, the rest being held in a checking account. In 2021, the Institute invested 75,000 in short-term GIC with short-term investment totaling 150,000 at year end. Deferred revenues increased by 22% year over year to 31,063. It should be noted that deferred revenues, namely monies collected in the later months of one year and then deferred to the next fluctuate year to year, depending on the timing of the membership renewal campaign and scheduled days for educational programming. In all, the Institute's net asset grew 58% year over year to 579939 with increased revenues for both membership in education and with a generous one-time donation from the Canadian Foundation for Professional Administrators as they close their operations. Now looking at the statement of revenues and expenses, many line items stayed relatively the same in 2020 or as we had budgeted. Overall, revenues increased by 27% year over year to 710,570 compared to 2020 of 558,938. Looking specifically at the two main revenue jet categories, membership revenues increased 22% to 297,746 versus 2020 244,962 despite the financial hardship brought on by COVID-19. Education revenues increased by 11% to 336,748 versus 2020, 302, 405, with both educational programs seeing their participation rates grow. Overall, expenses increased 6% to 497,096 dollars versus 2020, 470,374, Looking specifically at those expense items with differences of 20,000 and more, we can reward the following. At 61,158, IQP program expenses were 17% lower in 2021. In 2020, they were 73,547. It should be noted that the 2020 IQP program expenses included extra costs associated with moving the IQP exam online due to COVID-19. 
the CFPA donation helped offset these one-time costs. At $27,008, the DEEP program expenses were 35% lower in 2021. They were 41,391 in 2020. As, as costs associated with delivering the DEEP program online were generally lower, no room rentals, travel, or hotels. At, at 29,355, administrative expenses were 46% lower in 2021. They were, 40, they were $43,016 in 2020. It should be noted that in 2020, administration expenses in included extra costs associated with transitioning management companies. At, 20, at, uh, 20, at 203,300 association management expenses for 2021 versus 2020, 188,000 were higher than budgeted, which was 196,800, with the board of directors recognizing Treeline's excellent performance for fiscal 2020-21 with a $65 bonus. At 68,286, Advertising promotion expenses increased by almost 12 fold. In 2020, it was 5,302. Due to the non monetary transaction for Google advertising services provided via advertising grants secured by the Institute, it should be noted that the Google advertising have a zero effect on our bottom line. In all net revenue expense, net revenue over expenses for 2021 with 213,474. These money will be reinvested in institute education, membership, membership, and marketing program as defined in our 2022-2024 strategic plan. It is important to note that management fees were contracted with Treeline Associates Limited and Director of Education Fees were contracted with David Merege Consulting Services Limited. Thank you for your time. I will now entertain any question members may have. No questions. Sorry, um, Sorry. Susan Stewart here. The, the question I have has is in relationship to the comment you made at the very beginning about the financial statements being unsigned. This is going away from normal practice and I don't understand why the need not to present signed and non-draft statements to the membership at this point in time. I just wanna understand, is this something that's gonna be permanent going forward? And if so, should the membership not actually be voting on that? Um. I will I will take that question on Susan. I mean I mean the best that I can like I would not suspect that this is a gone this is a, a practice that will be going on forward. I think that that has not been in the past. I think I think that right now we're coming through a couple of very difficult very diff, very different years in terms of you said that we we're going to doing it at our next and our next meeting face to face which we haven't had in about 2 years, correct? Okay, so then how will we receive the finalized financial statements? We the members. <laughs> Patricia, do we have a um, do we have a, a a plan for that as finalized after the, because right now they're not they're not signed and and Susan wants to know when she will receive the signed the signed version of the same statements. Well, actually, they're it's not mm -hmm. that they're just unsigned. It's also they have watermarked that they are draft. That's what I mean. But I mean, when you would we can certainly redistribute them once they're signed and finalized. Yeah. Madam Chair, if I could uh, just maybe add something to this. Um, normally, uh, in my experience anyway, with um, uh, not-for-profit associations and things like that, the statements usually do remain in draft until they're approved by the members. The board has approved them and, uh, and has made a motion to present them to the members. Typically, um, the members would vote on those um, financial statements and they're signed or the draft is taken off at the time they're signed. Um, I think I think maybe what Sean was referring to was, um, I mean, we could sign them electronically. There's no question, but I think they were they were going to be signed in original, um, and that was that was kind of the plan going forward. But um, you know, as the chair of the audit committee, I, I can I can certainly say that 
the statements have been reviewed. Um, they've all been vetted. They are finals, even though they say draft. So I don't know if that helps Susan or not. Maybe the other thing also, and by the way, thanks a lot, Dan. That really helps a lot for me in, anyways. And, but the other things that also is that I don't think that the members are required to approve the statements. The, the statements are approved by the board. So um, maybe that helps a little bit as well. Yeah, just to add uh, on to what John said, members um, are not required to approve. Uh, the statements are presented by the board. The board has reviewed the statements and it has approved them. Our job as a board is just to present to members, which is what is happening right now. And the signing is signing of the official copy that will be kept as a record of um, the statements going forward. Th thank you for the thank you for the clarification. But I guess you know I, I'm not going to dispute anything that you guys have, have indicated because you are correct. Members do not approve, but that's the whole issue is what was presented to us as members in advance was not sufficient enough for us to realize that that was what was going on. And without that information, I mean, I did send an email off to Patricia who did answer the question um, uh, separately, not quite the way it's been answered here and that's fine, but it's just one of those things. If you're gonna put draft on them, then the reader I think has the right to presume that they have not been approved by the board. I think they have been approved by the board, Susan. Yeah, I think there was a problem oversight in sending the draft version with that watermark. It should have been removed to send to us. But those are the final statements. Exactly. Madam President, uh, if I could, um, a lot of discussion, uh, clarification by, uh, by both Dan and Mr. Genot. Um, if there are uh, no further queries, Madam President, I'd be happy to move that the Treasurer's report and audited financial statements for fiscal year 2021 be accepted as presented. I'm happy to put that on the floor. Thank you very much, Robin. Are there any uh, anyone opposed? That It would be Susan that is opposed because um, only the board can... Unless I misunderstood the, the motion. Only I was very clear, um, Ms. Stewart, I'll, I'll read it again. Please uh, do so. The treasurer's report and audited financial statements for fiscal year 2021 be accepted as presented. And I think Mr. Shepherdson and Mr. Genol has provided, and uh, Mr. Anukum have provided clarity. Oh, Susan, do you still want to? the motion of I'm just going I'll, I'll abstain. It's just easier. Thank you. Okay, so any other abstentions? All right, so hearing no opposition, motion. You need, you need somebody seconding in that, please, Madam President. I will. Jill will. Thank you, Jill. Thank you, Jill. So just for for uh, clarity, no oppositions, one abstention. Anybody else? Oh. Right. So the motion is carried. Thank you. I guess the next step is that, would that did you want me to take that, uh, Madam President, and the appointment of the like auditor? Mm -hmm. Okay. I, I next, I move to appoint Kelly Weber. McNeely as the auditors for the financial year ending December 31st, 2020, 2022. Have someone second uh, the motion? I will second I'll it. I'll second it, Kim Chua. I second it. you got all of those seconders? <laughs> I did. Okay. Anyone opposed? Or abstain? Well, hearing none, the motion is carried. Madam President, that concludes the Treasurer's report. Thank you very much, Jean. Uh, the next order of business is to record the appointment of members to the Committee for Canada. So as per clause 3.4, subparagraph C, subclause one of the rules for the Committee for Canada, the following members have been duly nominated to the CFC, the governing body of CGIC, and are therefore declared elected for the terms as listed. 
So for a maximum term of three years commencing today until the close of the 20, uh, 2025, yes, annual general meeting or until such earlier time as their successors shall have been duly appointed. So Christine Carter, fellow of the Institute, Kim Chua, fellow of the Institute, Shauna Mason, fellow of the Institute, myself, Ingrid Stefancic, fellow of the Institute. The following members of the CFC are serving the second year of their three-year term. So Suzanne Barrett, also a fellow of the Institute, Robin Dunn, fellow, and Jean Janou, also fellow of the Institute. And the following three members of the CFC are serving their third year of their three-year term. Daniel Shepherdson, who is also a fellow, Christina Swan, fellow as well, and Winston Mbe, fellow of the Institute. So the next order of business is to elect members of the CGIC Board of Directors. So I ask for a motion to set the number of directors at 12. And I have a second. Is that you, Jin? Sorry? Yeah, Jill. Yes, we. Okay. All yeah. right, thank you. Anyone opposed? Any abstentions? Well, hearing none, the motion is carried. There are six vacancies on the CGIC board to be filled. In accordance with the bylaws, a call for nominations was issued and expressions of interest for the director at large positions were expressed by Shauna Mason and myself, Ingrid Stefanski. There are only two positions available and therefore these individuals are up for re-election by acclamation. The first nominee is Shauna Mason, fellow of the Institute who has been nominated to serve as a director at large. Is there anyone opposed? So hearing none, Shauna Mason is hereby elected to the CGIC board for an additional three year term. The second nominee is myself, fellow as well, who has been nominated as a director at large. Is there any opposition? Or abstentions? Hearing none, I'm elected to the PGIC board for an additional three year term. Thank you. And the BC branch and the Alberta branch have both named representatives to serve on the CGIC board for the next three years. So the BC nominee is Christine Carter, Carter, fellow of the Institute, who has been nominated to serve as a branch representative for BC. Is there any opposition or abstention? Oh, Madam Chairman, just a question and procedure. So the uh, um, the uh, nominations have been closed previously, and and so this is just a formality, then, right? Um, there's no Correct. need to actually formally close nomination, but that's already been done, I take it? Correct. Okay, thank you. So with respect to Christine, any oppositions or abstentions? So hearing none, Christine Carter, you are elected to the CGIC board for a three-year term. Congratulations. Thank you. Alberta nominee is Kim Chua, who is also fellow of the Institute, who has been nominated to serve as a branch representative for Alberta. Is there any opposition or abstention? So hearing none, Kim, you are hereby elected to the CGIC board for an additional three year term. Thank you. Thank you. So the following members of the board of directors are commencing the second year of their three year term, Suzanne Barrett, Robin Dunn, and Jean Genoux, all three fellows of the Institute. And the following three members of the board are commencing the third year of their three-year term. Daniel Shepherdson, Christina Swan, and Wisdom Nunze, fellows of the Institute as well. It should be noted that two vacancies for branch representative for Bermuda and British Columbia may be filled following the annual general meeting. If anyone attending today is interested in volunteering for the national board, committees, subcommittees, working groups, or branch council, we are always looking for additional help. The best way to solidify your position as a leader in the practice of good governance is to serve. Contact the national office to learn more about open volunteer positions. 
Yes, Logan. I see your hand is up. Thanks, uh, Ingrid. I, I wonder if you could take a minute and explain uh, the term limits on the national board. I can't think of anybody better to explain that than you, uh, because I think you actually wrote them a few years ago. Can you can well, you take changed. a minute? They've yeah, changed, we changed right? the, our, our Canadian bylaws to mirror the um, international bylaws. And it was basically to encourage a, um, a rotation in the board membership. I'm actually the board member with the longest tenure on the board right now. Uh, having been named VP and president, there was um, uh, um, a specification in the bylaws, which reflected the international bylaws saying that when you served a maximum two years, either as VP or as president, you could extend longer than your six year tenure as a board member. And we have a staggered uh, board membership. As I mentioned earlier, there's three year terms and they are staggered. So we want to have a turnover, but at the same time, we wanna keep the knowledge and the history of uh, the CGIC board members. So I encourage people to get involved, uh, you know, start with your branch uh, councils and to step onto the national board eventually. Uh, there are so many positions named by the branch councils and there are four director at large positions. So um, not all the branch council branches have the same number of board seats on the national council. It depends on the membership, it's historical. But uh, as I mentioned, the BC and the Bermuda branch currently uh, are missing one member on the national board. And we're always looking for new membership and we, we want to rejuvenate the board. So please do, uh, do get involved. I don't know if that answers your question, Logan, or if there are any additional questions. Thank you, Ingrid. For the most part, it does. But do I recall that in our uh, bylaw for the national organization, once you've served your uh, term limits, that even with a break, you can't come back? Is that correct. true? That's correct. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. All right. That's what I thought I remembered. I find that a bit unusual, frankly, but that's the way it is. Hey. Yeah, it's it's international. Oh, is it? Okay. It's Thank also you. Good governance, and we are a governance body, so. Hmm. Well, that's a debatable point, I think, Ingrid. No, not that we're a governance body, but that is good governance. But anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thanks for the explanation. No problem. So um, before moving on, I'd like to formally welcome Christine Carter, a fellow of the Institute who has just been elected to the CGIC Board of Directors. So Christine, uh, for everyone's benefit, is a lawyer with nearly 20 years of experience in corporate governance for public, private, and nonprofit entities. In 2019, Chris joined the BC Lottery Com Corporation as Corporate Secretary and Director of Governance. So Chris, we very much look forward to working with you on advancing the mission of the Chartered Governance Institute of Canada. I'm thrilled to have joined the board and I'm really looking forward to working hard, especially in the education space. Great, thank you very much for dedicating your time. So unless there are other questions, uh, that concludes the schedule business of the meeting. Um, have you had any additional questions, Patricia, or if anybody has any questions now the time? Um, there's one or two administrative type questions, Ingrid, but I'm not seeing anything that's general um, to this meeting. Right. Um, so. Ingrid, uh, Susan here. A couple things. First off, um, thanks for taking over having the longest term on the board. Um, <laughs> been there, done that. Glad I'm gone. Um, but I do have one question. It's probably better addressed to Patricia, maybe not. And if you don't have the answer, um, for us here and now, that's that's fine. It's got to do with the growth of the membership. Clearly, the numbers have grown, but I'd be interested in knowing um, of the growth of the membership, how much has that occurred in Canada versus mm. um, members from overseas? I know that there was the initiative being taken on um, growing through the um, Indian group um, or the group from India. Um, and that obviously, or I would expect has has help grow the numbers, but I'm interested as much as to what is the growth in Canada itself. Thank you. Um, absolutely. Um, 
If you can give me a moment, I can answer that question for you. I don't have it off the tip of my tongue. Did you want to go ahead with the, does anyone else have a question while I look that up? No, you're all just going to sit here and watch me click buttons. Awesome. <laughs> Did have a 20% growth in the past two years. I think it's a first in, in anyway, since I've been on the board that we've seen growth in membership. So hats off to uh to Treeline for 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 really working on, on the membership numbers. And you know, membership Susan, I had thought I thought I could pull this really easily from this report, Susan, but it doesn't appear that I can. I've got all of it by um, levels, but it's cut by levels and then by um, province, and it's going to take me a minute to calculate it. So would you mind if I followed up with you offline with that one, Susan? <coughs> Excuse me. Um, that That's perfectly fine. Thank you. Thank you. So unless there are other questions uh, and hearing no other business, and with all the business being completed, um, I will ask for a motion to terminate the meeting. So moved, so moved. There you go, and a seconder. I'll do it, Kim. I second. Okay, thank you. Any opposition or abstention? So thank you everyone for attending. And please watch your email for information about our strategic plan town hall in the fall of 2022. I hope to see you there. Have a wonderful afternoon uh, or evening. And thank you for joining, joining us.